in spirit, nutrition, your brother, your friend, your dietitian, back again for another installment, 40 years till freedom. Let's get it popping. So we've been told this narrative that 40 years is our magic number to freedom. You work for 40 years at a corporation, you climb the ladder and you reach freedom. Um, after you retire, you go work 50, 50 weeks out of the year, you get two years, two weeks to uh, go on vacation. Uh, you work during the daylight hours, nine to five. And um, you basically go through salary slavery. Um, this has been presented to us as the only option, as the only possibility. But really, there are an infinite number of possible realities. You can create the life you want to live and you can be all expansive and all accomplishing if you so choose. It's interesting because today, while working, I had to make run some errands for some of my patients. Um, we're doing things for the the holidays and different things that are coming up, um, and uh, we had to purchase purchase some things. But I was in line and I was standing behind some women who were discussing retirement and discussing um, some of the things that they were experiencing during their working life and one of them basically was saying that i i'm retired now every day is a holiday and um it's all good you can you can cut in front of me in line i was in line trying to purchase something or retire uh, return something and um i was saying i have to get back to work plus they bleed but they let me go ahead of them because they were retired one was retired and the other one said she was off that day but the other one was telling me that and us that she's been working for 26 years and she only has five more years before she gets her freedom. These are, you know, pretty ladies, you know, but they're old, older. They're not like really young, youthful, things like that. Um, and they're talking about all the surgeries that they had. They had five surgeries for each hand um, because of carpal tunnel, because of trigger finger, 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 trigger finger. Their bodies were deteriorating because they're working and doing the same repetitive task at, you know, typing at a desk, clicking on a mouse, doing the same things, unpackaging unpa things, unpacking things for years on end. And it starts to damage the body because the human organism, the human body wasn't meant to do that um, for forever or for long periods of time. So then it, I begin to ask myself and I begin to question my reality because myself, I'm a young guy. Just was born a couple of decades ago. I'm in my early 20s. So I have intelligence, I have zeal, I have, you know, vibrant nature, ambition. And then I look out to people in society and a lot of them are dissatisfied. They went through the rat race, they climbed up the ladder, they did these things and they look dissatisfied. They look, you can see it in their visage, you can see it in their face. They're not alive. You don't see the electricity and the fire in their eyes. But everyone's telling me and telling us to go down that same route. So I begin to question, is that the only reality? And of course, no, that's not the answer. There are many realities. There's, all, there's an infinite number of possible realities, an infinite number of possible alternatives. The question is, what are you going to do about it? About the 40 year rat race? How are you going to extricate yourself? Are you going to get financial independence through studying the investing, through real estate, through your own self-employment, through, um, you know, providing a, a digital service, providing um, a real life service, barber, you know, barber, beauty products, um, you know, applications, uh, websites, blog. What are you going to do to extricate yourself from the rat race? From it's, it's really a form of slavery because you dedicate all your spirit, all your brain energy, 
you know, hours and hours, the majority of your life is spent working in a place for security. When the body is deteriorating, it's breaking down, you know, you talk about senseless things, you talk about the same thing over and over in these, a lot of these positions that people are in, and you're not fulfilling your dream or passion. So as a youthful person, as a young person, as anybody, 30, 40, 50, 60, wherever you are on your journey, I ask, what can you do since the power is in your hands? What are you doing right now and every day to change your narrative, to say, I don't have to go down this route and follow this course that everyone has created for me. There are alternatives. And so that's what I'm doing now and what I'm realizing as a young man. How can someone tell me that I should work for 40 more years until I'm 60, 70, 65, 70 years old until I reach my freedom? And, and have a, such a low quality of life when this is all we have. All we have is now to live. All we have is right now. So I study every day and I'm happy and I smile, but I know in the back of my mind and in the present forefront of my mind that it's not natural. It's not normal to get cancer, to develop carpal tunnel, to develop heart disease, stress, anxiety, fear, crying at work, um, not expressing yourself, being in a space that doesn't allow you to be your true self and chase your dreams. It just, it's not worth it on the planet. You come from, we're, we're made in the image and after the likeness of the God, most high God, Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh. You know what I mean? You, whatever your name is for the most high. We're made in the image and likeness of that. So, I've traveled to different countries and I've seen other people's lifestyle. I have friends that live in LA, live in different parts of the country and world that live a different lifestyle. They're actors, dancers, entrepreneurs, um, people who do blogs, um, do different things. You don't have to live that lifestyle. When, we're, when it's stated that we're made in the image and after the likeness of God, of the Most High, that's dealing with the spiritual aspect of yourself. You are actually spirit encased in flesh. So when you say you're a spirit encased in flesh, you have all the creative abilities that the Most High has. has. You're in tune. You're a son or a divine daughter. So that means you're a daughter of the Most High. You're a son of the Most High. That means you can create as your father creates. You can create as your mother creates. You can create infinitely. So when you say you're a spirit, that means you have the will, the creative power and the omnipotence in a way that the most high has. So if you have that, you can create value. You can create value for yourself and for millions, for hundreds, for thousands. And that way you can have wealth. You can have freedom. You can have prosperity. But to say, I'm going to sit somewhere and make chump change $100 a day for 40 years. $200 a day for 40 years. That's not even counting the taxes that people are taking. $500 a day for 40 years. It doesn't make, it just doesn't compute. It just doesn't make sense when we're wealthy, wealthy, we're infinitely wealthy and we're, we're priceless. Ask yourself how much Ralph Smart, I consider him my mentor. It's a lot of brothers putting out cold information, a lot of sisters putting out cold information, ancient timeless wisdom that some of us study, but we let the world come in and take over us. Some of us read and, and started applying, but we let the rest of society change our mind, our third eye, or, or, or veil, put a veil over our third eye. But Ralph Smart, um, he basically was saying that, how much would you sell your teeth, all your teeth for? How much would you sell your hand for? You can't put a price on that because you're priceless. So when you say, how much would you put a price on your whole life, your freedom, your time period on the planet is priceless. So once you realize that, you start thinking differently. You start saying, it doesn't make sense for me to spend my life here on the planet doing something that destroys me, that's physical, that's not even creating value for, the, for humanity, for my family, for something that creates a low value I mean, it creates a low quality of life. And you don't have to get anxiety and say, okay, well, if I'm going to reject this world, what am I going to create? 
in its place. Or you don't, before I go there, you don't have to hate the world that, because like for me, when I found out how unjust the rat race was, how unjust, you know, society was, I, I started blaming and hating on the society. But really, it's all about perspective because the society is not doing anything to you. You're a, you're a divine son. You're a child of God. You're a, child, you're a daughter of the, of the Most High. They're not doing that. Nobody's doing anything to you. you. When you go to a job, you sign up for it. You do. You decide to agree to their rules. You decide to wear the clothes they tell you to wear, to co go to the meetings that they tell you to go to. You don't have to do any of it. You could just quit. It's free will. It's not slavery. But in your mind, because it's shackled, because it's so limited, and you have this tiny conception of your true power, you don't realize that although I live in, I'm working and living in this matrix in this society, there are alternatives and I have the power to create them. I have the power to bring them to reality. So your energy is now focused on hating and destroying a system that you can't control that's outside of you. All your energy is put towards cultivating that divine power and will that you have within and tapping into that creativity from your subconscious mind and the super conscious mind and saying all my energy is going in towards creating the alternative ideal, the world that I know I have the power to create just as others have created, I can create, right? Just as they manifested their world and had other people sign up to it, I'm going to create and manifest my world because I am creative. I have the greatest of all human qualities, initiative. I can create something that did not exist before and it can feed myself and my children because I am a reflection of the most high. When you come from this perspective, it's not about fear or anxiety of if I'm going to reject this matrix, what am I going to supplant it with? There are an infinite things you can supplant it with. You're getting paid pennies. You're getting duped. You're getting fleeced. I don't want to focus only on the negative. There's a lot of good things about having jobs. There's a lot of good things about the matrix. Because if it didn't have good things about it, if it was purely evil, it could not exist. Anything that exists in the universe has polarity, meaning duality, meaning it has positives and negatives. So there's positives. You get to provide shelter for yourself. You get to provide uh, services to people who come to the businesses and things like that. But when you look at it and, and analytically and critically from a larger perspective, is it deteriorating? people's lives, their quality of life, quality of life. And when you look at it from a larger perspective, you realize I could actually do more. I'm worthy of more. I am worthy. You are worthy. You're a hundred percent worthy. A lot of people go through things in their life like trauma or they, they were told that they weren't good enough or they had low self esteem or they experienced something in society or they saw something that you know, showed them or taught them that they weren't good enough. You're good enough. You're worthy. I'm worthy. When you realize that and you feel it viscerally, then you allow yourself permission. You give yourself permission to live your dream. That's why I always say that in my channel. And I try and spirit people with that message because people don't even like. No one's holding you back, really. You're holding yourself back the most when you feel like you're not worthy. Oh, I'm not worthy of a good relationship because I was in this relationship with this person and they tore me down or I did this person dirty or I had all my past experiences with men have been poor or my mother told me that I'm, I only deserve this much or my, because of my race, I only deserve this much or I've had bad experiences with men or with women. No, no matter what you've been through, no matter how many times your face has been in the dirt, no matter how many mistakes you've made. You're still worthy. You're hundred percent worthy. Now you're worthy of abundance. You're worthy of positive relationships. You're worthy of the best. You're worthy of health. You're worthy of sustained abundance. That's what I call it. Sustained abundance. Um, the question is, are you prepared for it? Because it's not enough to say I'm worthy. You have to start preparing yourself for it. So how do you prepare yourself for certain relationships? You start refining yourself. You start 
preparing yourself for financial management by managing what you do have to the best of your ability and learning something new about finances, about entrepreneurship, about self-employment every day. So now you're already worthy, but every day you're getting more and more prepared for your crown, for your throne. You can't just say I'm worthy and then you don't prepare yourself for the throne. You have to know that you're worthy of where you are. If you're obese, if you're overweight, you're worthy of reaching whatever goals it is that you're going after. Not for someone else's beach body, not for someone else's uh, GQ body, men's health body. Whatever your goal is, you're worthy of it. How could you prepare yourself for the marathon? How could you prepare yourself for losing weight? How could you prepare yourself for um, self-employment and living in abundance, making $1,000 a day, making $365,000 a year? If you don't feel like you're worthy of it, you're not even going to start preparing yourself because you don't even believe that you're worthy of wearing a size zero, wearing a size six, wearing a size four. I don't know the women's sizes like that. Traveling the world, learning Spanish, aprendiendo español. ¿Verdad? Si no crees en ti mismo, ¿qué vas a hacer? ¿Qué puedes hacer? If you don't believe in yourself, what can you do? What are you going to do? Right, But once you have belief in yourself, faith in yourself, knowing that you're good enough, now you can start preparing for your crown, for your estate. I'm realizing people have been duped. They're accepting something less than what they deserve. And they're going along for the okie doke because other people in society are going along with it. Who says that we have to work at a nine to five, not see daylight, not spend your time with children? If we have a brain, we have the most complex computer and complex system discovered on in the universe that gives us the ability to discriminate, to um, you know, problem solve, to reason. Then you have the the the, the subconscious mind. That connects us to the all-knowing source, the super conscious mind, which is even older and more powerful than the subconscious mind. That gives us infinite power, omnipotence and creativity to bring something into fruition, to bring something that it, that will change and improve our condition. So we have all these powers and things like this willpower to the willpower means meaning the ability to do something and bring it to fruition, to not give up. The fortitude, the consistency, the persistence. We have all that, but we believe we're supposed to just live this small dwarf life. It doesn't make sense. Your brother, your friend, your dietitian, you're back again for another installment. The 40-year rat race, how to live it, how to escape it. This is just my, my thoughts today. Peace.